on behalf of PennDOT, Mike Kaiser. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, again, just uh, welcome to Harrisburg and uh, welcome to the uh, 2022 uh, Northeast uh, Bridge Preservation uh, Partnership Conference. Uh, again, it's exciting to have uh, representatives from, uh, from all the, uh, the states. Uh, I'm gonna read them off here, but uh, I, I think we have representative for each one, you know, Connecticut, District of Columbia, Delaware, uh, Massachusetts, Maryland, Maine, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New York, Rhode Island, Vermont, and, and of course, Pennsylvania. I uh, also wanna thank uh, participating municipal representatives and our industry partners for, uh, for being part of this uh, important conference. And uh, again, hopefully everyone uh, also feels good that this is actually in person. So uh, I don't know if anyone Zoomed out or Teamed out or you know, whatever. Um, yeah, it's get, yeah, again, important at the time, getting a little old. Uh, I had my kind of first hybrid teams meeting just this past week where uh, I met with a state representative in his capital office. Uh, a secretary couldn't make it, so she was on teams and kind of kind of felt like I was photobombing the guy the whole time. I was just, just behind him in a chair. So <laughs> a little, little strange. He wanted me to sit beside him. I said, hey, the secretary knows what I look like, so I'll, I'll just sit here in the back. But... Anyway, again, uh, thank, thanks. Uh, I, I want to. I was going to say this at the end, but uh, since I'm all over the place with my talking points, uh, I just want to say thanks for everything uh, you folks do. Uh, you know, for the industry. Uh, you know, you, it, hardly a week goes by when there's not discussions about infrastructure in the country. You know, our roads and bridges are are very important. Very important to the economy. Um, you know, we got a lot of uh, challenges right now with, with inflation. Uh, I'm looking at our program. We were pumped up and so excited last November when, uh, you know, we were able to announce a $2.5 billion program. And unfortunately, the reality is, is uh, you know, inflation probably has eaten into that by the tune of probably close to $400 million. Now, again, still good news because without the federal bill, we would have been at $2 billion instead of $2.5 billion. But, uh, you know, our, our dollars certainly uh, are, are not uh, uh, being uh, available and, and used on as many projects as we had anticipated. And, and that's really one of the reasons why bridge preservation is so important. And, uh, you know, what that means to PennDOT, of course, uh, we're, we're uh, advocate for, uh, you know, Ashto's bridge preservation policy. So any kind of actions or strategies that uh, prevent uh, or, or delay, uh, you know, deterioration of our bridges or, or bridge elements. That's important, that's something we look at. Uh, we wanna keep the, uh, the function of existing bridges intact, uh, keep bridges in good condition, and uh, obviously extend their lives. So again, the funding that we do have uh, can, can be spread around and, and address all our facilities. So again, we, like I'm sure all of you, uh, you know, embrace innovation, uh, new ideas, new products and uh, continue to use our experiences to make bridge uh, maintenance uh, procedures and repairs the best that can be provided. I, I know there's a lot of districts out there now that have uh, on-demand contractors, uh, you know, specifically to, uh, to follow up after bridge inspections or any time of the year on specialty repairs for, you know, our steel concrete structures and uh, Again, unfortunately, we still have a number of bridges that do get hit, uh, you know, regardless of the amount of signing that we have, uh, you know, whether they're, uh, you know, over, oversized or, uh, you know, just didn't get the permit. A lot of time we find ourselves uh, cleaning up after, uh, not necessarily highway and bridge contractors because they have the equipment. It's uh, kind of the folks that are maybe trying to get started and put a piece of equipment on a flatbed and no one takes a measurement and you know next thing you know we we're replacing uh the fascia beam on a structure and uh you know there goes a couple hundred thousand uh pretty quickly and pretty frustrating sometimes because uh generally they hit the newer bridges but uh anyway uh you know uh there's there's a lot of work for everyone out there so uh you know keep up the keep up the good work and again we we, we monitor and, and try to maximize the use of our federal uh, uh bridge preservation funding uh, you'll probably hear a little bit about more, you know, that over the next couple of days. Uh, 
And again, just try to minimize uh, exposures to potential bridge, bridge structure deficiencies in the out years. So if you look at our programs, if you dive into the uh, uh, transportation improvement plans or even broader, the 12-year uh, the program, you know, you will see a nice mix of, of bridges in there. And I, I say that, uh, and when I was kind of looking over these notes, you know, you, then you, you, you know, you think you're in good shape, you're, you're on the way, and, uh, you know, then we have a pandemic and we lose $600 million and we have to, you know, knock off uh, projects that we were planning to, to bid. And, and I can tell you today, e even sitting here in, in 2022 and looking at 2023, there's, there's probably some projects that uh, we were planning to do in 2020 and still have not, you know, gotten them uh, reset, so to speak. So, Again, uh, you know, very critical for us here in Pennsylvania. We do have a large number of bridges. Um, I'm not going to bore you with all the numbers, but a little over 25,000 bridges. There's another 6,800 bridges that uh, over 20 feet that are locally owned. Uh, I believe we do about 18,000 bridge inspections a year. Um, and again, just, just finding the right time of the day to do that. Uh, in our uh, urban areas with uh, high volumes, uh, you know, whether it's bridges, whether it's overhead sign inspections, you know, sometimes we're out there Sunday morning. It's not the most uh, cheapest uh, time of the week to do work, but we try to stay out of everybody's way, and, uh, you know, we still catch a little grief even when we're out there. So, again, the only other thing I wanted to note is, of course, we have our bridge asset management system. That's uh, uh, BAMS for short. Uh, you know, that helps... Uh, you know, our planning and programming partners and our districts evaluate and predict uh, upcoming bridge preservation needs. Um, so that's, that's obviously a good tool to have in the toolbox. Uh, so again, together, you know, we'll take bridge maintenance uh, in the Northeast uh, forward toward excellence and through uh, teamwork and cooperation among all stakeholders. So again, just a little short introduction here. I hope you have a great conference. And once again, just really appreciate uh, Everything you do uh, for uh, infrastructure here in the United States and, and in your state particular, obviously very, very important. And uh, again, it's nice to see we have uh, some younger folks in the, in the room here. So uh, uh, I think there was actually a little typo, Scott. That's not your fault. There was an old uh, um, bio. It's actually 1986. So, you know, if you're looking at me and say, hey, Kaiser looks kind of rough there, you know, that, that's, that, you know, you can, you can add 10 more years there to the, to the thing. So it's been great too. you know, you're in this business. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's pretty cool to, uh, to positively, you know, try to impact people's lives. And, uh, you know, 36 plus years go by pretty quickly. So again, thanks for everything you do. Have a great conference. The preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.